nothing and it went off and you got no, no, This member decapitated. It's probably because you're trying to hide something and make sure certain details don't come out. Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Annie Elise and this is 10 to Life where we talk all things true crime. Most of you guys already know what it is we do here, but for those of you who are brand new stopping by for the first time, welcome. I hope you enjoy today's video and consider subscribing by hitting that subscribe button below. And for all you returning subscribers, I love you. You already know what we do here, so I don't need to explain. I'm coming to you very quickly. I literally just got out of the shower, so please excuse the wet hair and the tracksuit. I'm not working out. I'm just trying to be lazy and comfy. I wanted to jump on here really quickly with you guys because I have been piecing together a ton of information over the last few days regarding Brian Laundry, Gabby Petito, and, and the Moab murders. Now, for those of you who aren't very familiar with that or didn't see previously, I made a video back when all of this first happened before Brian was even found, and really talked about what I believe to be a link between the Moab killing and the Gabby killing and that Brian could potentially be involved. Now, when I first put this video out, not many people were talking about the connection yet and a lot of people gave me quite a bit of flack for it because at that point, the police had already said that they ruled him out as a suspect. People were saying there was no connection and to my surprise, and I'm sure many of you over the last few weeks, more and more people are talking about it that it really is a possibility. And this new information makes me feel like it is even more of a possibility. So I'm not going to keep talking. Let's just break it all down. And if you want to catch up on that first video where I outline all of the things that tie them together, you can catch it over here and I'll link it below. Um, you just go to my playlist and look for this thumbnail. Now, let me just break this down for you. Last week, Brian's parents, Chris and Roberta, filed a petition in Sarasota County Court, and they filed this petition asking to become the administrators of Brian's estate. Now, the filing is needed before Brian's parents can legally get their hands on any of his assets that are left behind. And let me just tell you, with like probate, the courts, it always becomes like a huge thing. And unfortunately, this is usually a legal paperwork thing that you have to do, regardless if you're the parents or the child in that case, trying to obtain it any assets that legally belong to you or should belong to you. So the records show that they had submitted Brian's death certificate along with information about his bank accounts and his property in this court filing. Now, one of the most interesting pieces of this filing is that they say Brian left behind a bank account with Bank of America with assets that had over $20,000 in checking and savings. He was apparently debt-free at the time of his death, and now the parents are seeking to obtain that estate from him, that $20,000. So let me tell you why now, more than ever, I believe Brian may be tied to those Moab murders. So if you watched my previous video, you already know about that, the timeline and the outline I gave as far as why I think they could already have been linked. But let me go over this quick timeline for you just to summarize it again really quick. We know that this young couple encountered Gabby and Brian on August 12th because Kylan, one of the girls in the young couple, was working at the Moonflower Co-op where we know that Brian and Gabby stopped that day. They got into an altercation, hit the road, somebody saw something, called the police, and that's when they were pulled over and that body cam footage was taken. Then something that not many are talking about is the very next day on August 13th, Brian posted an Instagram photo and he was in the the exact same park that Kylan and Crystal were camping in. Then, that very night after he posted that he was in the same campsite that they were at, the two women went to the local tavern and they were complaining to friends about a creepy guy at their campsite that they encountered, which I suspect may have been Brian Laundrie. They were complaining of this creepy guy and said they ultimately ended up changing campsites nearby, but it was, you know, it jolted them enough to where they told their friends about it. The very next day, they weren't heard from by any of their friends, and Kylan didn't show up for her shift at the Moonflower Co-op. Then the next day on August 15th, they were officially reported as missing. Unfortunately, three days later, their bodies were recovered. Now, here's what's crazy. We know that Brian flew back from Utah to Florida and the dates that aligned. He left Utah on the 17th, which was the day after the young couple was reported missing officially. He then returned back to Utah from Florida the 23rd, five days after their bodies were discovered. Now, the reason for him returning to Florida, it was said that it's because he had to close his storage unit. He didn't want to incur the monthly fees for the next month, even though 
it wasn't the next month yet. He still had about a week or so to go. And nobody was really believing this story because we know storage unit costs can be, you know, 99 a month, maybe 150 a month, at max 200 a month, because I can't imagine he would have that big of a unit. But it just wasn't making sense because you would think, He's spending more, most likely, in the airfare of getting back to Florida than he would be for those monthly fees. But a lot of people were saying if he really needed to save money and he was trying to live that van life, that maybe he, in fact, did go back because he couldn't spare that money. Now, right out of the gate, when I started talking about this timeline over, I guess, two months ago at this point now, people were saying, you know, no, the police have already said that they're not connected. He didn't have a gun either. There's no way. Well, we now know he did, in fact, have a gun because... That's the way that he took his own life, allegedly. And I say allegedly pretty loosely here, not to be a conspiracy theorist, but I know we're all thinking it. And we also know that they came across each other that day that the body cam footage happened. They were in the same campsite the following day. They were complaining of a creepy guy. And his hotel, by the way, that he was staying at was a seven minute walk from the tavern that they went to that night. In my opinion, far too many coincidences already were in the mix until this new bank account information got discovered. So too many coincidences, in my opinion, for them not to be tied together. But now let's get into this banking because he's saying that he left the day, you know, he's saying that he left to go close out this storage unit. If he had 20 grand in his bank account, do you really think that he would be so worried about a $100 or a $200 monthly fee? Probably not, and probably not worried enough about it to where he would need to not only do the labor of closing out his storage unit and moving everything, which did we ever see him moving things back into his house? I don't believe so. But also probably not worried enough about that money to spend so much money in airfare last minute to go back and forth. That strikes me as odd. But even more than that, if he had this $20,000, why was he using Gabby's card after she vanished and incurring those charges on it? if he had his money of his own. Because as a reminder, federal authorities in Wyoming issued an arrest warrant for Brian on September 23rd for allegedly using her stolen card around August 30th, which is kind of when this whole timeline went back. He got back to Utah on the 23rd and he started charging things up around the 30th. And they say that the total value of everything on the and all the charges on that card aggregated to approximately $1,000. Again, a large amount of money, not an obscene amount of money to which he couldn't have paid for things accounting to that number amount himself if he had $20,000. So why was he using her card if he had his own money? Could it be that he had to use Gabby's card because he didn't have access to the funds at that time? And follow me with this. So if he didn't have access to that money, or if maybe he didn't even have that money truly in his possession at that time, he would need to use Gabby's card, obviously, to pay for things, and that's what totaled to around the $1,000 in value. So what I'm wondering with all of that is we know when this entire thing started, when he returned to Florida for the second time, and Gabby wasn't with him and all these questions surfaced, that there was just, you know, a complete shit show with the police and the FBI where they were saying they were watching him, that he was safe, his parents knew where he was, they all had, you know, eyes on him, which, in fact, they really didn't. Um, We know the parents said that he went camping on the 14th at the reserve and never returned, but then later said in a statement that upon further communication, they realized he actually left a day earlier on the 13th, where many looked at this and thought, hey, I think the parents are involved and they're helping him get a jump on this entire situation because how are they saying he left one day when he really left earlier? It just made no sense at the time. And truthfully, it still doesn't make much sense. So could it be that they gave him the $20,000 in a Bank of America account, whether it's his name, their name, whatever it is, to help him flee and survive while out on the run because it did look as though they were trying to give him a head start. So could they have given him that $20,000 to help him get on the run, survive, pay for whatever he needed to pay for? If it wasn't in his account, maybe it couldn't be traced with the activity, although I would imagine his name has to be an authorized user on it because that's why they're now going through the court filings to get the money back. But now that he's deceased, are they trying to recover that money? Because think about it. If he had 20 grand just parked in his own checking and savings account for however long, he wouldn't have been worried about those storage fees. He wouldn't need to use Gabby's card either. So where did this money come from and when did it come into his possession? I want to know if it's liquid assets. I want to know if, when that, those deposits were made, if it was a lump sum, if it was small things, uh, however long the transaction history goes to where it then aggregated to the 20000 or could it have been a lump sum deposit in those days in which he ended up going hiking and never returning? I have a lot of questions, guys. 
It just makes no sense to me why somebody who has assets of $20,000 liquid in a checking and savings account with the Bank of America would need to fly all the way home and spend, you know, almost a grand in airfare just to close out a storage unit to save $100 or $200, and why he would then need to draw attention to himself and create more red flags by using his now deceased girlfriend's credit card where they would obviously track his activity. He wouldn't need to do that if he had access to his own money. So did he not have the funds at the time? Did they come later? Who gave him the funds? And now why are they trying to take them back? Strikes me as very odd. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think that he had this money the entire time that it was his? Or do you think that he was given this money by possibly his parents in an aid to help him continue to you know, flee and be on the run for however long. Because again, I'm just stuck on it. Why would he need to use Gabby's card? And why would he be so worried about these storage fees that he would use nearly 10 times the amount of the monthly fee in airfare just for travel expenses to get back to Florida and come back if you were not tied to the Moab murders? Unless you were trying to get away from a crime scene and have some sort of weird makeshift alibi that you weren't anywhere in town. Because also remember, guys, we now know that the, he did in fact have a gun. We don't know at what point, but we do know that he had a gun. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. The hearing is set for next month where hopefully we'll get some answers not only if this is approved and if they get those assets in, into their possession, but also I'm hoping that we see some sort of information as far as what that transaction history looks like and where those assets came from. Because it strikes me as very odd that suddenly he would have $20,000 liquid in his account. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I will keep you updated. I'll let you know about the hearing. I'll let you know as I dig and find more information. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn your notification bell to on so that you get notified when these updates happen in real time. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video today, guys. Please give it a like on your way out. And remember, let me know what you think in the comments below. I wanna know, do you think that money has always been in his possession and he was just hiding it? Do you think it was new money? Why would he use his car, Gabby's card if he did have money? Why the storage fee? So many questions. And I still do believe, it's my belief that he is tied to those murders of Kylan and Crystal. And I hope that that information surfaces sooner rather than later because they still have not named any suspects in that case. What do you think? Let me know. All right, guys, until the next case, stay safe. Bye.